Greetings and welcome to today's episode of Cooking with Sonic Blue. Today's recipe is going to be so easy, I bet you I can do it entirely with Bowsy sitting on my shoulder. That's how easy this recipe is going to be. We're going to be celebrating St. Patty's Day the traditional way, and it's traditional in this household every year to get corned beef brisket, the flat cut kind. Ooh, such delicious good meatness. But the only thing about this is it's so expensive. This one wasn't too bad at $7.73. But then the but other one was like $13 something. You look at this size here. This costs $13.23. So make sure you have a good budget before you make plans to have dinner our traditional way. And that's a little bit of extra saving the month before because what's February? Valentine's Day? You just got something expensive, like nice for your loved ones for Christmas. Just take them out to dinner. McDonald's is good enough. I mean, they have a dollar menu, right? But today, we are going to make up for that dollar menu hell that you had to go through in order to get through the drive-thru. You gotta sit there, and sometimes the order doesn't even come out right. But this will come out right every single time. That's how easy this is gonna be. First of all, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut open our corned beef brisket like so. Be careful not to cut into the meat. And we have to cut it down, so we have to find where the... The hardest part about this is opening the package. I got a little corner of it right here. <laughs> Pull this thing open and that will expose the meat. Take it over here to the sink. Okay, maybe I need to sit this because this is some pretty tough adhesive here. There we go, cut across the top there. And now we can just tear right into this thing. Now you'll notice when you pull up your corned beef brisket, you see a little package here. Let me put that in there for the moment, and yes, the sink is clean. You see that? This is a package of flavoring that we're going to be adding to our water. Yes, you heard right, just water. No broth, no nothing. It makes its own broth. That is a big, huge chunk. That's like a double layer right there. Yeah. That's my favorite. It's right here, attached to the meat. So we got it two It was flavors. still attached to it. <laughs> we got two flavors. Now, what we need to do is we need to drop these straight into our stock pot. You're going to need one of these. And now, so let's fill this up. And as it's filling up with hot water, place these length side down like this into your stock pot. Or that'll just go straight in, but. Ah, that's good enough. Now remember, the juices that are still on the meats, you don't have to rinse out the meats. You just throw them right in the water there and add enough water to cover. You want about a nice good sized layer of water that covers your meat, mainly because it's going to evaporate after four hours of boiling. Yes, four hours we're going to boil this. We've added our water to our meat and at our stock pot here. Now we're going to add our seasoning, which is nothing more than just a lot of spices and peppercorns. And you just drop them right in. A tree full body. Hey! You must have been an apple of salt and or a king. So, nice and squeezed. Just give a nice squeeze from the bottom. Put the peppercorn in there. It's paper, basically peppercorns, capers. You can add extra flavoring if you want to, such as pepper, salt. We'll add a little bit of salt to this, but not much because it's got plenty of capers in there as well as peppercorns. So you have lots of flavoring to go in there. Now let's add the other package. And every package is measured according to the size of the meat, making sure that you get plenty of it in whatever it is you're about to prepare. There you have it. And so, we will reach for our salts, which we're using sea salt, the healthier the better. We're gonna add a little bit of sprinkle to that, not much. Just a little. That should be good. And since there is peppercorn in there, we don't even need to touch pepper. We don't even need the pepper mill. Now, you might say, well, what about the cabbage? This gets saved for the last 15 minutes of the four hour task it takes to boil this meat. Now, you're asking, can you also bake it? Yes, you can bake it, but you would have to bake it in the style of a roast. Basically, it has to slow cook in order to maintain its texture and its level of tenderness. And the best way to do it is like a pot roast, or you can just boil it straight onto, the, onto, the, uh, onto your uh, stovetop. And that's what we're going to be doing here. So, Bowsy, are you ready? 
let's go and put this on the on the stove top here here we go and we're gonna crank this up and you want to cook this at about six maybe even seven if you feel gussy there we go there's the foof I was looking for let's set that to a seven it's a medium high so we're gonna wait until that boils up and bubbles and in about four hours we're gonna have a meal just fit for St. Patrick himself wherever he may be So, what do you say that we clean up a little bit around the kitchen because it's always best to clean as you go and it also prevents germs to spread. And we're gonna leave this alone. Four hours later, we're gonna come back. But before we go, I would also like to show, uh, share with you some other ideas that you can possibly add to that. Now you're gonna say, this looks too boring. Just meat and seasoning. You can add potatoes, carrots, peas, anything you want to to help flavor the water. Anything you add to a pot roast, you can add to this. And it'll taste a lot better too. If you add some red potatoes, some carrots, and uh, maybe even snow peas if you want snow peas in there. You can add pretty much anything. Lima beans if you like that, which I hate lima beans. Ugh. But you know what you like, and you know what you like in your pot roast, or in this case, corned beef brisket. It's prepared the same way, so prepare it the way you would prepare a pot roast, but just let it cook for four hours, and then 15 minutes, if you had cabbage, add this during the fifth, last 15 minutes of cooking time. Mainly because cabbage does not take long to cook, and if you overcook it, it becomes soggy, and it really doesn't taste that good. We want it still to be nice and crisp and leafy. So, we're gonna set that aside. And while we're doing so, me and Bazzy are gonna take this intermission for four hours. See you back then. Hey, we're back, and I still got the lizard. Yeah, she's being adorable, girl. Yeah, but let's uh, check out our food. And like, like always, right here with the lizard, got some pretty sharp claws so she'll be able to stick to my shirt but look at that that is about almost done nice and boiled up and the flavor of the capers and the uh, and the corns the peppercorns and the clove and everything else that goes into that season packet has been blasted through the broiling process into this meat to really give it a nice flavor through rigorous boiling all that seasoning just pummels that meat some of it actually sunk into the meat itself. Now comes the cabbage part. And here is the easiest thing to do in the ways of cabbage. First of all, we're gonna take this head of cabbage and it's probably best results to peel out the outside layer first. The first outside layer, peel that off because God only knows where that one layer has been. And the rest of it, you just rinse under cold water. Give it a good rinsing. go until it's nice and rinsed give it a little shake be sure if you uh, cook with your lizard don't uh, shake too much or else that lizard's gonna go right into the sink and that would not be good of course this one is a daredevil anyway this one is a daredevil but uh, she knows when to stay put and she knows when to take a leap of faith and now it's not that time yeah, stay up there Bowsy. Yeah, it's a good girl yeah, yeah it's a good girl and I got a picture for Geepy. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Bowsy is such a happy girl. Okay, basically what we're going to do is we're going to take the stumpy part and put it straight down, straight down on the counter there. As we slice, make sure you have a sharp knife too. If you have one with a serrated blade, that would be pref uh, preferred. But kind of slowly and gently work your blade down into this cabbage. Go nice and slow. Whoa, and watch your finger there. Go nice and slow so that way you don't slip. And just keep on working cabbage down until you slice it directly in half. Now, flat end down, I'm gonna slice it again in half again. Basically slicing these cabbages into quarters. And just kind of slowly work at it. 
sometimes it would help to take your hand with making sure your fingers aren't under the blade itself. And there you go. There's a quarter. There's a quarter. Do the same thing over here. Directly in half until you get four quarters of cabbage. And this is what we're going to be adding to our water. So, last 15 minutes, in goes the cabbage. And the lizard is getting antsy. One, two, three, four quarters of cabbages on the top of it and make sure that your water doesn't runneth over. And you will notice that when you start cooking this, your water supply will go down. It will go down. So, in about three hours in, replace with more water on the top and you will have made a beautiful corned beef broth that uh, will be oh so great in cooking cabbage and probably the best part of saving the cabbage until last is so that you get all of that flavor from the broth in your cabbage so it makes for a really nice tasting cabbage if you don't like the taste of cabbage try it this way you'll actually probably like it because I wasn't a fan of cabbage either until I tried it this way and now I love cabbage as a matter of fact cabbage is one of the ingredients used in egg rolls cabbage imagine that cabbage having so much use and uh, well you can make cabbage rolls cabbage soup you know, cabbage, uh, there's so many recipes for cabbage. We're gonna have to explore some recipes for cabbage. What do you say? Well, anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here to this, these cabbage quarters. And depending on how many people you have in your household, you'll probably wanna cut this up even smaller so that way everybody will have a nice, good sized portion of cabbage to have on the side of their corned beef. Now that's going to be soaking and boiling in that water for about 15 minutes and we've already boiled our meat for four hours so that's been in there for a long time enough to get tender so we're going to let that cabbage boil for about 15 minutes and when it's nice and still crisp and fully cooked through and through we're going to remove the cabbage we're going to place it aside and we're going to serve up our meats and we're going to show you just how delicious corned beef brisket can be in a traditional St. Patty's Day meal and it is so easy to cook it's so easy you can actually babysit your lizard at the same time of making this meal. And I have done so, haven't I, Bowsy? Yeah. Now, you'll notice that as your cabbage boils too, some of those capers will start floating up into the cabbage itself, and thus flavoring the cabbage. Peppercorns, capers, and lots of other different things. See, I just saw a peppercorn fly in. Corns and capers. That's what you're gonna find in that envelope. In there, right, Bouncy? You kinda wanna stand over your uh, food for the last 15 minutes or so so that you can really check your cabbage and the progress therein. You wanna make it sure that where it's nice and cooked through and through, keep poking it into the water there. And if you lose some of the leaves on the top, that's fine too. I mean, that's that's all a part of the meal. Yeah. And there you have it. You don't even have to core it or anything. Just cut it up into quarters. And the core makes for its own holder, so it holds most of those uh, leaves in place. That's right. And the way that you can tell your cabbage is cooked is when you give it a pinch, you can see how firm it is, but also the color. Now you notice your cabbage will discolor slightly when it's reached its full cooking potential, like over here. See this one? See some of the leaves have fallen off of it too, so we'll go for it some of the top layers. See, there you go. See that shade of green? It's almost like a greenish yellow. When it gets to that color, then your cabbage is pretty much already cooked. And we can start serving up our cabbage. Here it comes. There's the cooked cabbage. And this plate will serve up the cabbage on. Here comes this quarter. Let's take a look at this one and see. This one was a big quarter. So this one might have taken a quite a while for it to cook, but it doesn't take long to cook your cabbage. And that is a nice cooked cabbage. Ooh, watch out for that water. That water just ran down right in from the tongs right under my hand. Ooh, that was hot. Okay, so drippy, drippy, come on down. Serve up your cabbage on one plate. And then from there, you can serve up your meat and you can finally get to it. Now look, there's a beautifully cooked ha, 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 cabbage. <laughs> Damn my water. <laughs> I didn't drop it though, folks, because even 
You at don't. extreme water temperatures such as that, that's boiling water too going on in my skin. Let's just pull that out. Don't even try to turn it over because you'll be, you'll be getting a good dose I of water. I always liked, I always liked it just you know reaching in there, grabbing the brisket, and then taking the cabbage out and then putting it on the plate. Ah, but this one, this one gives you the flavor of the beef, the broth, and everything going with it, including the capers and the peppercorns. Pull all that cabbage right out onto one platter. Look at that beautiful cabbage. Beautifully cooked. It did not take long. See, look at that beautiful leaf. Beautiful. And I know a lot of you people out in channel are probably saying, ew. Some of you people on YouTube are probably saying, ew. But don't knock it till you try it. The cabbage is really good if prepared properly. If it's too, if it's cooked too much, then of course that's not going to be good at all. Now we can finally get to our corned beef brisket. And we're just gonna lay this down on a separate plate. There's the one. Here comes the smaller plate. Whoa, you see? It fell apart right there in the, in the tongue. That means it's well cooked. If it falls apart when you try to grab it, you know it's done. Yeah. And be careful not to let any of that water on your skin because that hurts like the devil it does. But there you have it. Corned beef brisket, cabbage, and you have a nice cabbage broth with the capers and peppercorns already mixed in. So you can actually save this and make yourself a soup to go along with it. All you have is noodles or maybe even bits of beef. And you got yourself a nice beef, corned beef soup with cabbage. So the possibilities are endless. But I'm going to turn off this water now so that way we can let this set down. We're going to serve this up. So we need a couple more plates for that. And Bowsie's gonna help, huh? Bowsie's gonna help serve it up. Yeah, no joke. Whew, that's where the water hit, right here. That hurt. <laughs> Very much so, but like they say, you can't take the heat. Stay out of the kitchen. We're gonna try to cut this down here. And there is no trying involved when cutting down corned beef brisket when it's cooked tender that is the knife just goes right through it so serve up a nice couple of generous portions of corned beef brisket your family will love it and so will your friends and your guests anybody you have happen to have over for st. Patty's Day they're gonna love it and you're gonna love it you're gonna be back for seconds and thirds and fourths this will make a great sandwich and put it on toast with some mayonnaise and maybe some mustard they make great sandwiches for leftovers but since it's St. Patty's Day, you can also enjoy this with a side of Irish whiskey or Irish cream. Bailey's is really good to have with this. So I'm going to serve up, how many pieces do you think would Wolf Dog like? Maybe about that many? Mm, actually, I can I can down quite a bit of, of this stuff. Of yeah. the Let me just go ahead and add that piece just to be on the safe side. And I want some cabbage too, huh? Without it going all over the place. <laughs> well, that's going to be kind of difficult to do since yeah. it loves going all over. Let's get some nice cabbage leaves here. Nice big I like cabbage. I like a whole lot of cabbage. Oh, I do too. So let's go ahead and get you a lot of cabbage there. There you go. How about that to start? That'll work. This corned beef brisket is so tender, you won't even need a knife to eat it. Oh, trust me, I've had corned beef and cabbage, and actually, I like the stuff. Oh, yes. Express, I like it when, <laughs> heck, I could even eat this uh, all the time if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I it's could good. too, it's but healthy it's expensive for you, though. Oh yeah, it's expensive, but it's healthy for you at least. Yes, it is. So, the first bite of St. Patty's Day corned beef. This is going to be interesting. This is going to taste good. I can just feel it. Oh, I know it. And how does it taste? Just boiling it in water and the capers and, and the corns that come with it. How tender are we talking? Oh, it's tender. So tender you won't even need a knife. Now for the cabbage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let us know how the cabbage is. And I think we cooked it for about 10, maybe 15 minutes we were at this. And here we go, cabbage. Oh yeah, it's very, very tender. Very tender and not too moist or not too soggy. Mm-hmm. Just 
the way exactly it's supposed to be. Exactly where it's supposed to be, yep. All right, and there you have it there, folks. Mm -hmm. Look at that, see? It's I didn't even, the littlest pressure. This, there it is. And that is just some good corn oh, beef and cabbage, which is always my favorite thing to. Yes, mm -hmm. it is. I think this will be good enough for me to start. Beef. <laughs> yeah. You and good. corned beef? Yeah. I go crazy with corned beef. Yes, we know this. And of course, not to forget the cabbage. Of course. If I can somehow lift this big hunking quarter of cabbage. <laughs> a little help with the finger there. There you go. There we go. Nice. I like it. Alright. So, there you have it. All you need is just water and the uh, flavor package that comes with the, with the corned beef. Usually it's capers and peppercorns. Capers and corns is what we call them here. Capers and corns. Capers and corns. Very delicious. And <laughs> since they're in the form of corns and capers, they really blast against this meat, giving it a whole blast of flavor while it's boiling. Oh, definitely. Now the test. Mm. It practically melts in your mouth. Well, that's what, there's, that's what it's mm. supposed to do. Oh, it's so good. Very tender, very juicy, very difficult to resist. Mm. I'll try the cabbage next. I'm going to try the cabbage. You can tell on how tender that is just by oh, looking at it. That's a pretty big piece of cabbage, too. Yes, it is. Now the only thing you really need the knife for is cutting the cabbage. Of course, you got the uh, the core that holds all these leaves down. And look at this beautiful array of leaves. Just a perfect mix of green and red. And this makes you look like Christmas already. This isn't a Christmas meal, this is St. Patty's Day. Mm. That is perfect. Mmm. Oh yeah. Oh no. If I can have this meal a little more often, you definitely know I would. But it's so expensive to prepare. And not to mention, it does take a long, uh, does a take long a long boiling time. time. Yeah. So the downside is long boiling time, expensive meats, but you make up for it for the flavor, the ease of cooking, which is just throw it in water and boil. That's all you got to do. And then 15 minutes in, uh, into pulling it out, just throw the cabbage in, cut it up in quarters, throw it in, and then pull it out, slice it up, serve it, your guests will love it. But if you can spend the money, I definitely recommend this for your Patty's Day. So, from all of us here at Opop Vets, to all of you out there, we recommend to cook good, eat good, and you'll definitely be talking about some good eats with this stuff, let me tell you. What does Bowsy think of it? Oh no, Bowsy, that's not for you. That's my dinner. You ate already. Yeah, and uh, please, don't feed your lizard cabbage. That's not the right greens for the baby to eat. That's right, because you like mustard greens, huh? You like mustard greens and romaine lettuce and crickets and mealworms. Ugh. I'm glad I'm not a lizard. So, we're going to put lizard back in their cave. In a little terrarium. So, from all of us in this wacky family, to all of you out there, and hopefully your family isn't as wacky, but as long as they stay hungry, they'll always be in the mood for good eating. And if you're not cooking good, you're not eating good, and you're definitely not eating what we're having. So pick up a plate and start eating. This is Sonic Blue Dark Vault. Mm. Now we're going to open up the other one. And while I do that, yes, I know it's very difficult to resist petting the lizard while we cook. Film. There we go. Okay, now we're gonna get this other piece of meat here. Hey, Bowsy, what you doing? <laughs> what you doing? He's all looking around. The thing about working with animals is they are very unpredictable. So, why do you think I'm taking, um, keeping extra care of this yes, little, little girl but right Bowsie here? Bowsy is also very tame and yeah. is really good about staying on shoulders. Especially when people are standing, they don't leap or move around too much. That's what I like about her, is she yeah. doesn't do that. <laughs> she kind of clings on. Oh, and... that's a big piece. Here's an extreme cult of a lizard. <laughs> if she loves to pose, she knows she's on the camera. 
<laughs> lives to be in front of the camera. And she smiles all the time. Yeah. I think she's wanting to get a little taste of what we got cooking up here, but that's not for lizards, baby. So you, you got your own food. You got your crickets and your mealworms. Let's see how beautiful everybody looks. Let me show the camera how beautiful this purely is. See how beautiful? There you go. See? Say hi to everybody. Hi. She sees the camera now. It's like, oh boy, photo opportunity. <laughs> hi everybody, I'm Bowsy. And I'm pretty. She doesn't know what to make of you. <laughs> but yeah, she's a happy lizard. Very, very healthy and very aware of her surroundings. She loves being petted. And she loves being in the face of the camera because she's a natural poser. Yeah, she's a natural model. Yeah, such a beautiful bearded dragon. Should be a model. Yes, yeah, she should. Can you show everybody how happy you are? Show everybody your smile, huh? Come on, show everybody your smile. You smile. Give everybody a good gape. Show everybody how beautiful you are. There it is. There it is. See? I knew you had it in you, baby. Yeah. Isn't this the happiest lizard you've ever seen? <gasps> Smiling for everybody. <laughs> body temperature and she'll gape. But I think that it's out of uh, happiness that she's doing that, not just uh, her body temperature. I think she's doing that out of happiness. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, I just put her in a, oh, oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> you are silly, baby. Yeah, she likes it underneath the chin because that's where it's warmest. That's where she likes to cuddle, too. She's a cuddle. She's a cuddle wizard. It's like you have a necklace. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm making a fashion statement. Right. It's the new lizard necklace. Get one today. Oh, it's actually real? I'm going to get one to use as a pet, not as a clothing accessory. But if the lizard doesn't mind, then feel free. Get yourself a lizard necklace. And now it's walking away. <laughs> uh, what do you want? What, you want the spices? She's smiling now. She's gaping. Yeah, she's gaping again. Oh, look, she's gaping. She's happy. She is the happiest lizard I've ever seen. You need to find a way to... Hey, Bouncy. You can help me cut the cabbage. Or are you just going to hide in my hair? Yeah. She's going to hide in my hair. But unfortunately, this meal isn't for everybody. And unfortunately, Bowsy won't be able to eat any. I got my hair in you. <laughs> you were hiding in my hair again, weren't you, baby? <laughs> yes, you were. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And we're gonna go back home so that we can eat in peace. Oh, I know, I know. Oh, she doesn't want to go in. She's clinging on to me for your life. She <laughs> <not want> <laughs> <laughs> I know. Look at this. She doesn't want to go back in. <laughs> she just does not, she's just kind of like, nope, nonsense. Never put up that much of a struggle before. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, he won't play this.